Hello audience. Today we will discuss about the electromagnetic interferences, known as an EMI, and electromagnetic compatibility, known as an EMC. The absence of an EMI in the system is called as an EMC. EMC implies a balance, don't disturb others and don't get disturbed by them. For better understanding, let us start with Fundamentals of Electromagnetic Compatibility, EMC The currents and voltages in one piece of equipment produce electromagnetic, EM, fields that reach into nearby equipment. It is obviously better to anticipate EMC problems, by laying down timely requirements and taking the necessary precautions. EMC really means living in electromagnetic harmony with neighboring systems. It has two main aspects. 1. To function satisfactorily, meaning that the equipment is tolerant of external electromagnetic noise generated by a neighboring system. 2. Without producing intolerable disturbances, meaning that the equipment does not bother nearby equipment. First, we will discuss about the natural and technical sources of electromagnetic signals. To a certain extent, electromagnetic signals are natural phenomena. One of the best known phenomena is a lightning strike, this current causes high electromagnetic fields. Other than that, we also have atmospheric radiation that is comparably small. Electrically powered equipment, as already mentioned, is a man-made source of EM. Frequency ranges a key characteristic of electromagnetic noise is its frequency. The EMC standards generally cover the range from 0 Hz to 400 GHz. The RF range is generally split into a conducted and a radiated range. For the lower part of the RF range, noise is expected to travel along conducted mediums like cables rather than radiate from the equipment. Differential Mode Noise Looking at conducted signals, Noise can occur between any two lines of the system. In a single phase system, this could be between phase and neutral lines. In a three phase system, it could be phase 1 and phase 2. In DC systems, the noise can travel from plus to minus. Such noise is called differential mode noise or symmetrical noise. Differential mode noise is a result of parasitic components in a circuit such as equivalent series inductance, ESL, or equivalent series resistance, ESR, or components. Common Mode Noise Noise can also be conducted from any line in the system towards Earth. In a single phase system, signals could go from L and P towards Earth. This type of noise is then called common mode noise. The main difference is that common mode noise travels in all lines in the same direction and then towards Earth. Common mode noise results from stray capacitances in a system, often occurring between semiconductors and heat sinks. It is more often found in the higher frequency range. Noise Propagation Electromagnetic signals are generated in electrical and electronic systems and can then propagate inside the system or even outside. This propagation can work along lines or through radiation. Coupling Methods Looking at the connections in an electrical or electronic system, we can identify three different coupling paths. One is galvanic coupling which requires a direct connection between the single parts of the system. Galvanic coupling effects often ensue due to common ground connections. Second is capacitive coupling, which can happen when two cables of the system are routed close to each other, thus forming a parasitic capacitor. Capacitive coupling is typical for industrial applications, where power and signal lines are laid parallel over long distances where cable loops of different cables are laid out too close to each other, inductive coupling can occur. Radiation Noise can not only propagate along direct connections but also through the air via radiation. Once HF signals are generated inside a system, they are simply propagating along the path of least resistance. 
If the structure or layout of the system provides good antenna characteristics, the signals will use those parasitic antennas and radiate from the system into the air. There, the noise travels as electromagnetic waves and can be picked up by other equipment along its path. Now we will discuss about the EMC measurements. First, we discuss about the emissions. Emission is every electromagnetic disturbance that is produced by the equipment under test, EUT, and given off to the environment. To guarantee the proper operation of other equipment in the vicinity, this unintended emission must be limited. Signals can generally be transmitted through air or long cables, resulting in radiated and conducted emission. Now we will see the types of emission measurements. High Frequency Radiated Measurement Air Transmitted Interference, called radiated emission, can be measured with a receiving antenna on a proper test site. High Frequency Conducted Measurement Conducted emission is any emission transported from equipment to the environment along cables. The main emphasis in measuring line conducted emission is placed on the AC mains input of the EUT, though other interface ports are becoming more and more important, like telecom and network ports on information technology equipment. The ground reference plane, GRP is an essential part of the radiated as well as conducted emission test. Discontinuous Interference Domestic appliances, power tools and certain other products need to be measured for discontinuous interference in the frequency range of 150 kHz to 30 MHz. Because the interference generated by such products is not periodic, the limits are relaxed compared to continuous limits. Voltage fluctuations and flicker. When loads are being switched on and off constantly, the voltage supply will experience fluctuations and changes that cannot be compensated fast enough. Although not directly influencing other equipment, such fluctuations can become an annoyance if electric light connected to the same supply unit changes varies to the fluctuations. Flicker is a result of voltage fluctuations. Now we will discuss about the immunity tests. A product should be expected to work as intended correctly in any environment that they are reasonably likely to encounter. RF Immunity In order to test equipment for its immunity against RF signals, a defined signal needs to be generated and coupled into the EUT. Due to the nature of the signals and their means of transmission, Various transducers are defined by the relevant standards for various testing methods. The base signal for all RF immunity tests is a sine wave signal, which is then modulated in different proportions and applied to the EUT. Conducted immunity At frequencies up to the point at which the EUT dimensions approach a quarter wavelength, the major coupling route into the EUT is via interference injected in common mode on the connected cables. Analyzing cables as a source is therefore an important method for checking RF susceptibility. Transient Immunity In addition to covering continuous radio frequency phenomena, EMC means ensuring product immunity from several sources of transient phenomena that are present in the electromagnetic environment. Therefore, immunity testing involves applying a repeatable pulse of a defined amplitude and frequency into each relevant cable port in a specified and reproducible manner. These testing can be to ensure immunity to natural phenomena, such as electrostatic discharge ESD, and lightning surge, or man-made, such as switching transients and fault surges. Electrostatic Discharges ESD. All conductive objects have self-capacitance with respect to ground and mutual capacitance with respect to other bodies. This capacitance can maintain a DC charge with respect to ground. This is called electrostatic discharge. Two methods are given. Contact discharge and air discharge. In the contact discharge method, the stress may be applied directly to the EUT or to a coupling plane adjacent to the EUT. Electrical Fast Transients, Bursts 
When the circuit is switched off, the current flowing through the switch is interrupted instantaneously. Put another way, at the moment of switching there is an infinite di by dt. As a result, a high instantaneous voltage, added to the circuit operating voltage, appears across the opening switch contacts. Surges High energy transients appearing at the ports of electronic equipment are generally the result either of nearby lightning strikes or due to major power system disturbances such as fault clearance or capacitor bank switching. Power Frequency Magnetic Fields Power magnetic fields are magnetic fields caused by the AC mains power supply in conductors. The fields are continuous and related to the current flowing in the conductor. The frequency of the field corresponds to the net supply frequency, that is, 50 Hz in European systems. We Croydon Services Private Limited will assist you in the primary stage of EMC design considerations and provide you EMC testing solutions for products applications. Thank you.